Okay, folks, so we're back. And as you can see, I have sliced mushrooms that I bought at Walmart. They didn't have too many bags. I picked up two. All right, they were like a dollar. I believe they were a dollar twenty-eight. And I had a, a bag of mixed vegetables already in my freezer, so I didn't have to buy those today. So I wanted to do a quick little video. Now, something I want to talk about real quick. When you're putting your trays together on certain types of machines, one of your trays is considered the top tray. As you can see here, it has a cap on it. All right. You want to make sure that that cap is always the top tray. Do not make the mistake and put this anywhere else except for on the top of your machine. Now, the reason being is the hot air comes up through here. All right. As soon as it hits this top, it disperses out and goes back down. So what would happen is if you put this tray somewhere, say, down here in the middle, and then you took and put these trays on here, nothing on the top is going to dehydrate. And you're going to waste all that time. All right. So you always want to make sure that this top tray, if you have a machine that you have to worry about this, if it comes and you open it up and it has this little cap, what you can't see down inside, that has to be on the top, folks, okay? So, what we're going to do is, like I said, I have some mushrooms. I have, um, I'm not sure exactly how many trays we're going to need. We're going to put one off to the side because I don't think I'm going to need it. <clears throat> I'm going to put my mushrooms towards the top. Now, you take these out. You can let them set out for a little while and thaw just a little bit, but you want to just, while they're in the bag, crunch them up, folks. All right, just crunch them up. This way you're breaking up all the big pieces and you don't have to worry about that so much. Uh, it's a lot easier to do it inside the bag than it is when, once you put it on your trays. So you just want to make sure that you crunch those up really good. Whatever it is that you are dehydrating, it could be broccoli, it could be peas, it could be carrots, corn, uh, mushrooms, uh, Brussels sprouts. Uh, the list goes on and on here, folks. So you just want to make sure that you just take these. And if you take them out for like a couple minutes beforehand, you know, it makes it a lot easier. You're always going to have those few that just don't break up, okay? This isn't a foolproof system but this just helps make things easier all right now when you're done doing that you either have to have a pair of scissors or get yourself a knife and then what we're going to do is dump these out on our trays So it looks like we're going to get one bag of mushrooms on a tray. Now, when you're doing these, you want to make sure that you spread these out so they're not touching. Within reason. Don't cram the tray. All right? Because, you know, I mean, the stuff's going to touch. You know, but try to do your best to alleviate that. You know, you're going to get a lot of little pieces because you have your screen on here. All right? So this way here everything doesn't fall right through because trust me if you do not use a screen and you're using anything small you will have one heck of a mess in the bottom of this pan all right because it's all going to fall through and it's not going to dehydrate properly because it's all in the very bottom of the machine and it's all piled up so there's one tray Set that off to the side. So I want my uh, those over there. Spread all these out. And like I said, you're going to have those ones that still stick together, even though you tried to mash them in the bags. But you know, it's it's fine. You just go in and just. As they, they warmed up just a little bit, they're very easy just to break right apart. All right, so we have 
two trays of mushrooms right now. Now, let's see when I do these, how many I can. Now this is just mixed with vegetables. You know, if you find a sale, that's the time you want to buy a lot of these products. So right now with the holidays, Now, from the last time I did this, I found you don't want to overfill because it's going to take longer to dehydrate. Now, speaking of temperatures, all right, we're going to be doing these at 120 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 hours. Now, the last time that I did... I haven't done mushrooms before, so that's a first for today. But the last time, all right, we're gonna we're gonna make this work on these two trays. I'm not gonna get another tray out just for just a little bit. Now I did have somebody ask me, can you season some of your products? And I guess you probably could. I haven't read anywhere where it said you couldn't. So, like, if you wanted to add salt and pepper um, or a seasoning mix or something, um, try a batch and see how it works. I, I haven't read anywhere where it says, no, do not do that. So, now we've got two trays of the mixed vegetables and we have two trays of the sliced mushrooms. We're going to put our lid on. My dehydrator is already set, like I said, at 120 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're going to do it for 10 hours. So all I have to do is step around the front and hit the start button. That simple, folks. This way here, you know, it does make a little bit of noise. They all do. You can have this in the house if you would like. I do mine out in the garage, especially now that it's getting cooler. I do it out in the garage. It's pretty well controlled climate out here, um, especially, you know, being that it's not 110 degrees outside, which makes it a little bit more difficult. And the humidity is lower. So, you know, depending on where you want to do it, you want to make sure that, you know, you have some place because some of your products that you do, are going to have a smell to them and you may not want that aroma in your house so that's another reason why I do these out here in the garage I don't have to worry about it I can crack the garage door a little bit and everybody's happy wife's happy I'm happy I'm putting away more food and that's what it's all about so we're gonna be back in about 10 hours and see what the final product looks like stay tuned Welcome back, folks. It's been about 12 hours now since this dehydrator finally finished up. I checked it after 10. They still needed to go a little bit longer, so I threw them on for a couple extra hours just to be on the safe side. Now, one thing that you do have to remember, when you're dehydrating your vegetables and all those different type of things, you want them to be good and dry and crisp. So they're kind of crunchy. All right? And then, don't forget the little trick that I did show everybody using the aluminum foil. I started using that back in one of my other videos. And you just take and just take your trays, dump them onto your aluminum foil, fold that bad boy up like a taco, and pour it into your jars. No mess or anything else. And then if you're one of these people that like to reuse things and everything else, if you're getting ready to cook dinner or if you're going to be barbecuing or something like that, there's no reason you can't use this. Wrap up some baked potatoes or corn or whatever it is you want to put in there and use it again. So this way here, you're trying to use products more than once. Once you pour these things in a jar, always do remember that you are testing them for the crispness 
and they're crunchy. Okay. Once you pour them into your jars, and you can see, you don't get a lot once they dehydrate. That's two bags of mushrooms. And that is one bag of mixed vegetables. So you probably could get about 10 bags in one jar and three bags in one of these jars. I did do mixed vegetables. I do have a dehydration video on that. You can see how much I did get actually into one jar. Now, if you did notice, I have these little packs in here. Now, these little packs are silica packs. All right, now the difference between a silica pack and an oxygen absorber pack is the silica pack is what draws the moisture out. An oxygen absorber is what takes the oxygen out. I do not need to put an oxygen absorber in here because I'm going to use my vacuum sealer and suck all the air out of here. I want the silica pack to be in here just on the chance that there are maybe a few pieces that had a little moisture or something left. The silica pack will help draw out that moisture and make sure that these things stay good and dry. Now, one caution of warning. When you go on to buy your silica packs, you want to make sure that you're buying the proper ones. Because if you notice, if you ever bought a pair of shoes, if you buy anything you buy, sometimes you'll find one of these little dinky packs and stuff in there. It says, you know, don't eat, throw it away or whatever. I mean, I don't know who would want to try to break one open and eat it, but hey, it is the 21st century. But anyways, you want to make sure that you're buying the ones and they state food grade. When you go to buy these, I buy mine on Amazon. It's the cheapest place I found to buy them. When you go on there, they state food grade silica packs. Okay? Those are the ones you want to buy. You can buy small ones. You can buy these big ones. I like to do the big ones and drop them in there because this way here, you know, they're going to suck out any moisture or anything else that's left in any of these products if there is any. You know, because you're not going to go through and test every little piece. You're going to grab the couple of biggest pieces you can find. And if those are good, more than likely, 99% of the chance that everything else is good to go. So this way here, you know, you're preserving your products for even longer term. Now you could use these silica packs if you wanted to vacuum seal, if you wanted to put them in a Marlar bag. And a Marlar bag, you would have to put in oxygen absorbers and the silica pack to make sure that you're drawing out the air and the moisture but by using the canning jars and stuff which really is really nice is I can vacuum seal those no problems and it's all done put the silica pack in there draws out the moisture and there we go folks and I store all my spares in a mason jar they do have a resealable bag they come with I don't really trust those things, so I'd rather put them in here where I know that once I screw the top down, it's good and sealed. That's also how I store my oxygen absorbers, is in a mason jar. It's the best way i found the storm. So this has been a video on dehydration, the do's and don'ts, and just a little bit of dehydration here of the mixed vegetables and some mushrooms. Now all these trays and stuff, will fit right in my dishwasher. I'll run them right through there, clean up the machine, and we'll be good to go. So I'd really like to thank everybody for everything that you do for my channel. I'd like to thank you for all the likes, for all the subscriptions, and for sharing these videos with all your friends, families, and loved ones. I, Survival Preparedness for Beginners, do appreciate everyone out there and everything that you are doing for this channel. And that is why I keep doing a lot of these videos to help keep you informed, to help make sure you're prepared, and to help make sure that you and your loved ones can weather the storm that's brewing. So until next time, folks, you'll have a great day, and I'll catch all of you on the flip side. <laughs>